In this video, we're going to take an overview look at Firebase and Android Studio. First, let's consider the evolution of the cloud with Android. Initially, when Android came out around 2010, 2011, if we wanted to store something remotely, we had to do it ourselves. We had to create our own database online somewhere, and then we had to synchronize between the Android device and that database. It was a whole lot of work. As a matter of fact, my first few Android classes, it was about three lectures to get through all of that. Then there became an online cloud database called Parse from Facebook, and I saw people starting to use this, and then suddenly Facebook shut it down, which was a bit of a surprise. That opened up an opportunity for something called Firebase. So Firebase started, and it actually started as an online chat engine, and then the founders realized that people were using it not for chat, but to pass data back and forth, and they realized, hey, maybe there's something here. So eventually Google acquired Firebase, and then Google added a lot more things under the Firebase umbrella that weren't necessarily storage related. Things like the ability to do testing of your apps, Crashlytics to see how your app is performing, several other things. Uh, one other, authentication, which is really neat. So when you think Firebase, any of these things can come to mind, but many times storage is what comes to mind. So we have Cloud Firestore, which is the latest database version. It's composed of collections and JSON documents, and that's what we're going to be demonstrating in our example. It has several benefits, like the ability to specify a location, uh, shards, things like that, query ability. Now, the previous version of the database was called just Firebase Real-Time Database, and it was essentially a NoSQL database that stored JSON objects. I have old videos that show how to do that if you're interested, but since Cloud Firestore is the newest version and it has additional features, that's what we're going to use. Now, I mentioned that these data collections are JSON objects, essentially. So we think about JSON as text-based data. We don't think of JSON as binary data. What if you want to store an image? Well, then there's something called file-based cloud storage. And the handy thing about that is that can store binary data, like images, videos, things like that. And then we can take a reference from cloud storage, and we can update our cloud fire store or our real-time database with that reference. So we can link from the JSON NoSQL database out to Cloud Firestore, where we have binary data and the like. So those are the storage mechanisms. The other things that we can do, number one, authentication. This is a really good one, and here's why. A lot of times in a semester, I'll start with design documents, and students will show me design documents where they start their app with a splash screen and a main menu and then the login screen. And I generally knock all those out and say, don't do any of those. You're wasting the user's time. Uh, but sometimes we do need authentication and we want to let the user play in our app uh, as much as they can anonymously and only authenticate when they're doing something like saving data or reading data that's privileged. So nonetheless, uh, a lot of times I've seen students start their application with a login screen and by the end of the semester, that's all they have. They never get on to their core competency. What you really want to focus on is your core competency. With Firebase Authentication, it handles authentication for you. And there's a lot to it. It's not just create an account and do a logon. It's also, what if the user forgets his or her password? How do we handle that? So with Firebase Authentication, we can use email authentication, and it can even do reset passwords to that email address. It can also integrate with third-party providers like Google, like Twitter, like Facebook, so that you can have single sign-on capability. And it's really easy to set up. So if you use that, you don't have to worry about all the work of creating your own authentication engine, and you can focus on your project. There are also Firebase Cloud Functions, which let you do server-side activities when a certain event happens. And then Crashlytics, so you can take a look at your application and see what's crashing when it's rolled out and when it's on several devices that you do not own. So let's consider the database. Uh, this counts for either the traditional real-time database or the newer Cloud Firestore. One thing that's really handy about this, and we'll see this in our demonstrations, is that if we save from one device, it's very easy to replicate to other devices, including back to the originating device itself. So it offers a lot of real-time synchronization uh, between devices and among devices, which takes a lot of heavy lifting away from us. Now, the steps that we need to set this up is we need an Android project. And then if we're using Firebase Authentication and some other tools, we need to generate an SHA-1 fingerprint. If we're just using the database, 
that's not necessarily required. So uh, we then download the Google Services JSON file, which is a configuration file, and we put that into our project. And then we set some security rules for the database. This ties in well with authentication. So that authentication, the third party provider I mentioned earlier, we can use that to determine who can read from or write to our database. Now a quick look at Cloud Firestore. Cloud Firestore is interesting because we start with a root, and then from that root, we have a collection. That collection is a series of JSON documents, essentially, and they can have further collections, and those further collections can have further JSON documents, so on and so forth. So it's kind of an alternating concept where a JSON document can have attributes, but it can also own a collection of other documents. So think of a document as an object or a collection as an array list. We will walk through several examples of this through this course. And what I want to emphasize is that we can put an app together very quickly if we rely on libraries and third-party tools that are available to us instead of writing our own. It's also more reliable because these things like Firebase are used and tested across multiple applications versus us writing it ourselves. So that increases our speed to market, and it also gives us experience with using cloud. So I'm looking forward to jumping into it, and I hope you are as well. Thank you.